Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. It was a nice start to the day Sunday, but a day that ended pretty cloudy. Before those clouds moved in, though, we had the meteor shower last night, and all eyes were on the skies and had a couple tricksters up there, too. Braden got this photo of what we thought was a meteor, but turns out the Starlink satellites were making an unfortunate crossing during the meteor shower last night. But we did get meteor pictures as well. Katie got this picture near Scott's and then we got a round of pictures from Bob. One big clear meteor and this picture here. Several, the more you look at this one, the more you find those little faint streaks out there in the sky. The meteors that popped up over Lakeview and then another picture here showing a couple of those streaks of light. Again, thanks to Bob for sending these photos our way. Of course, if you want to find us on social media and send us some photos, you can always reach out to me. Facebook meteorologist Michael Barons and at Mike Barons WX on the X Twitter, Instagram and on threads. When it came to the temperatures out there today, hit a high of 78 in Grand Rapids, 81 in Muskegon, and 78 in Holland. Those temperatures not far from average for this time of the year, not far from our forecast either. Told you 79 hit 78 brings the accuracy streak down to two days in a row. When it comes to tomorrow, our temperatures are heading down and that'll be as rain returns to West Michigan as well. That's why 13 weather ball is lit up in blue as cooler temperatures are in view and blinking bright with rain in sight. The 13 weather ball is sponsored by LaFontaine Lincoln Grand Rapids. And those temperatures past 10 o'clock, we're still holding on to mild conditions. We're not going to get too cool tonight. In fact, temperatures only dropping to the low 60s as dew points remain in the 60s with humidity flowing back into the region. Temperatures still 70 in Grand Rapids. Winds out there as we head through tonight will gradually become more out of the east and eventually coming from more of a southeasterly direction as we head toward tomorrow. It will help to bring in some humidity ahead of the rain that will overspread the region as we head toward tomorrow afternoon. In fact, next 24 hours show mostly cloudy skies through tonight with rain shower chances starting to pop up by the midday tomorrow. Some showers may get here earlier than that. Rain though pretty consistent once we get to the afternoon with showers, some thunder and heavy rain expected through the end of Monday and into the early part of Tuesday. In fact, your day planner here mostly cloudy and mild tonight. 61 showers and storms and breezy tomorrow. 75. We stay in the mid 70s. Tuesday as skies clear out after morning showers come to an end. The radar out there this evening showing a little bit of green from time to time. A few sprinkles have fallen here in West Michigan, but as we switch to just the Grand Rapids radar, you'll see most of that is not reaching ground level. What you're seeing out there mostly just clutter on the radar at this hour. The rain, though, not too far away. In fact, big showers out over portions of Minnesota, stretching all the way back down through Missouri with more rain working through southern Indiana. All of this rain again eventually going to be coming through our region, and it will be quite a a heavy rain as it does. Hour by hour forecast here shows cloud cover staying in place as we head through tonight. Cloudy to wake up on Monday, maybe a peak of sunshine or two before the rain starts to come down again. That'll be most frequent during the afternoon. Certainly the heaviest showers and storms pushing through here during Monday afternoon. Those showers continue as we head into Monday evening and into early Tuesday with showers still likely by the time you head out Tuesday morning. Those showers continue to dissipate as we work our way toward the midday and eventually push out as we head toward Tuesday afternoon with sunshine returning as we head into the day on Wednesday. Temperatures out there with the rain tomorrow again cooler than today. Breezy conditions low to mid 70s for the lake shore. We'll see temperatures in our northern zones also in the low to mid 70s with mid 70s expected from Grand Rapids down to Kalamazoo. 13 your side 10 day outlook. <laughs> Temperatures will hold in the mid 70s through the start of the week, get close to 80 Wednesday, then briefly drop again with more rain chances Thursday. That'll be the last chance to rain before a drier, warmer pattern sets up heading toward next weekend. Temperatures will push into the mid, even upper 80s. Wouldn't be surprised to see some 90s in West Michigan as we head toward the end of next weekend and early next week. Humidity moves back in next weekend as well, and some pop up chances close out the 10 day forecast. The 13 on your side beach and boating forecast sponsored by AAC Credit Union. And time for your beach and boating forecast. The rain chances again going to make tomorrow not a great beach day. Waves out there not going to be too high though as winds will be flowing offshore. One to three foot waves on the northern end of the lake and dropping to just about a foot on the southern end of Lake Michigan. If you make it over to the water before the rain gets here though, you should see nice water temperatures. Water temperatures along the lake hanging around mostly in the low 70s. 
And our next couple of stories are going to keep us on the lakeshore. First up at Silver Lake State Park. They're best known for off-road vehicles taking on the sand dunes. But what happens when the summer season comes to an end? 13 on your sides, Liliana Mario tells us where they'll be taking, well, horses back out on the park this fall. The popular equestrian riding season will soon return. An event organizers say if you want to participate, don't hesitate to sign up when registration opens, as spots usually fill up fast. Silver Lake State Park is filled with off-road vehicles taking on the dunes all summer long. But what happens on the dunes when summer comes to an end? Uh, the month of November, we have a season now for equestrians to come out and ride from the parking lot out across the dunes to the Lake Michigan shoreline. The nearly 10-mile route takes equestrians along the lakeshore, allowing visitors to appreciate the scenery in a much different way. This is the second year the horseback season will return, and Johnston says they are working to allow more people to join in on the fun. We bumped the numbers up. We're trying to accommodate. We did limit it to 100 horses and people per day. Uh, but this year we think we can accommodate 125 per day. And he says the horseback riding season helps support local businesses in town during one of their slower times of the year. It does help a little bit there. It's not the very large numbers like we have in the summer season for, for the typical tourist season. So some people want to ride their horse two days in a row to spend a weekend here and they'll board their horse at the county fairgrounds or some other businesses around the area that will accommodate a horse to go in a stable overnight and you pay a fee for that. And Registration opens September 1st. There's a $10 registration fee per horse per day. Reporting in Mears, Liliana Murillo, 13 on your side. And staying at the lake last week, meteorologist Samantha Jack set sail on Lake Michigan, where she got a firsthand lesson from the teachers at MBJA Sailing in Holland, learning all about how the weather impacts their day to day. One of the most weather dependent sports is sailing. Today we're going to learn how, as well as how the forecast plays a role. Let's get started. It's like an airplane, airplane wing. So as you sail, the wind comes in and it hits it. Hit it all the way up. So it comes in at the front and then it like dips in because our sail has some depth to it. It comes in and it goes out and so it uses like a lift. Lift that moves you across the water using the wind and quick maneuvers. The wind's kind of coming from here, right? Yep. So sailboats can't go directly into the wind because then we get no lift. So we have to sail kind of at these angles to get to where we would want to go. We're going to be kind of tack what's called tacking our way up. So when I go for the tack, you're going to put one hand on this sheet here, okay? And then you're going to uncleat that one. Okay. And you're going to start pulling this one in when I tell you to. Okay. So I'm going to start the turn. So we're going to go. All right, uncleat. Start pulling. Start pulling. You can let it go. Oh, I see. Yep. Sounds easy, but if you don't move fast enough, it sounds a little more like... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I almost capsized us, but we're good. <laughs> Under. Feed it. Yep. Luckily, Eden's experience kept us afloat, and with a little more practice, Yep, that was it. Confidence builds. Got okay. It. And then clean it again. Yeah. Lessons continue. So when the boat starts to tip towards you too much and you kind of feel like it's in your face, that's yeah. when you would kind of move in a little bit. And a focus um, remains on the forecast. Yeah. Oh, this is also interesting. Look at the current mm -hmm. pushing us in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy right now. If you had to give people one piece of advice, what would it be for sailing? Don't be scared to just try it. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a little bit nerve-wracking doing so many things at once, mm -hmm. um, but it's so rewarding. We did it! What? It was good! I am definitely not as quick as her, but, you know, no, you're, you're a pro now. you get the hang of it. I don't know if I'll ever be racing. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> Switching gears now to the fires that have been devastating the island state of Hawaii. A West Michigan native and her family are also now among the thousands in the state finding themselves homeless this weekend. Their house destroyed by the wildfires that continue to burn in Maui. 13 on your sides, Micah Cho spoke with the woman's mother here in Kentwood. Wow, the fire. Oh my gosh. 
In disbelief, Maria Orr watches a Facebook Live of her son-in-law, Jesse Anacleto, showing the wildfire that has devastated the Maui town of Lahaina move into their neighborhood. On Tuesday, Maria got a phone call from her daughter, Kaylee Orr Anacleto, that they had to leave their home. And then it was 10.30 at night, she called me called us and was FaceTiming us and she said, Mom, we're evacuating. On Tuesday, more than 1,000 buildings in Lahaina were destroyed. One of them, Maria believes, are Kaylee and Jesse's home. However, their neighborhood is still shut down, so there's no way of knowing just how bad the damage is. I mean, it looks like their particular building or that they lived in might be there, but the one across the parking lot from that it looked like it was gone. Kaylee, who is from Grand Rapids, and her family are now safe with friends about six miles away from their home. Their daughter's school, also gone. Harley is six and a half and um, was supposed to start school yesterday, and her school was part of the, ca I mean, the whole town is a casualty. Now, with almost no reception on that side of the island, Maria and her husband, Randy, can only get infrequent updates on how the family is doing, which is very difficult for her parents. Like my daughter's phone hasn't been working. She finally got through to me today for like a minute and then it cut out and then I, you know, then I lost her signal. It's just been tough. You never know when, when you're going to get a call and, you know, you, you try and call them and it just goes to voicemail all the time. You, you just, it, it's been hard not having, you know, communication. Here in Michigan, the Oars are trying to figure out what's next. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't have a home. They have nothing to go to. And to rebuild that community, I can't even imagine how long it's going to take. Yeah. Years. And so I would imagine if they can, they would, you know, be here for a couple years. Micah Cho, 13, on your side. And finally tonight, a Nuevo County family had a special visitor on their lawn yesterday morning. They woke up to a peacock in their yard. The family first noticed him yesterday while at their neighbor's house and said he was on the roof until he settled into a tree. The family then posted on Facebook asking if anyone was missing a peacock and it blew up. Everyone was sharing it and tagging people. I didn't know peacocks were so common. When Anita was able to get in touch with the owner, the peacock got spooked by their car and ran into the woods, and he's still missing as of this weekend. The family asked anyone who comes across the bird to try not to catch him, but to contact the Nuevo County Sheriff's Office so they can come and pick him up. And now you're up to date with the latest forecast and some weather-related news from here in West Michigan and around the country. You can always find more online at 13yourside.com slash weather or by downloading our 13 Your Side news and weather apps. For now, though, thanks for watching 13 Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens.